Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tom Sun, the chairperson of the SPGA Associate Mentorship Committee. We are very fortunate to have two special guests today. Uh, first is uh, Mr. Greg Boddy. He's the Director of Business Development for Arrowwood Golf Course. He's been here uh, over eight years and uh, been through all the ups and downs of Arrowwood and he'll give us a great uh, presentation relating to uh, the flight deck, which is the Top Tracer Lounge on a range. It's very exciting to, uh, to give you this uh, presentation today. And next guest is Nikki Pritchard, Assistant General Manager at Arrowwood Golf Course. She's been at Arrowwood for over six years. Uh, incredible journey she's been on and she's very excited to give you an update on the current situation with flight deck and our plans for the future. So without further ado, we will uh, have quick introductions from Mr. Greg Boddy. Uh, just quick, quick uh, background of yourself, Greg, and uh, just any, anything that you want to tell us about yourself before we get started. Hi, thank you, Tom. Uh, as Tom had mentioned, uh, I've been with Arrowwood for eight years in multiple capacities. Um, really excited about this most recent project, the flight deck, which we're going to talk about today. Um, We've, as he had mentioned, we've had a long journey to get here and um, we're just so excited to be able to share what we've created here at Arrowwood. Um, it's really a culmination of a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication and a lot of focus. So um, really looking forward to my portion of the presentation and uh, hopefully we, got, we can educate everybody here and uh, certainly open to any questions once we're, we're done presenting. Thank you for the introduction, Greg. Uh, now we'll move on to Nikki with her introduction. All right. Hi, everyone. Yeah, as Tom said, I've been here for seven years now. Um, just behind Greg there, he's kind of taken me under his wing since I, since I started my journey here at Arrowwood. Um, but one of the great things about uh, Arrowwood is that we've been given the freedom to be creative. And um, this is a really creative thing we've done and it's it's given us a lot of success and a lot of FUN. So again, we're very excited to share our, our ideas with you guys. Great, thank you for your introduction, Nikki. Uh, basically today, I, I will not moderate a Q&A session. It's more of a, a two-part presentation, uh, one by Greg, one by Nikki. Uh, it, will it will tell us the story of Flight Deck, uh, the past, present, and the future. I think that there'll be a lot of lessons learned uh, relating to this uh, presentation. This is something very uh, new to our industry. I, I believe we are the only facility in San Diego to have the top tracer and the lounge and the hangar and put in, in the future, the food truck uh, at the flight deck. So it's very exciting for us to tell you our, our story. And uh, let's begin with uh, Greg talking about the past. Okay, uh, let me get uh, get over here. Can you see what I'm doing here? We see your face, Greg, uh, not the presentation yet. Okay. Okay. Here we go, okay. All right. We, oh, there you go. We see there the we, presentation now. Perfect. There we go. Nobody panic. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, what you're looking at here, folks, is um, a PowerPoint presentation that we actually now uh, show to all of our employees when they start here at Arrowwood. It's really a, a stem to stern uh, look at what transpired to get the flight deck open. It's really, it's very uh, employee centric. It, we definitely want our employees to see the process. Uh, you'll see some buzzwords, not only mentioned, but repeated here. And it, it really takes, it really takes our employees on the journey of what we've gone through. And as Tom had mentioned, Nikki will really take us through where we're going with the flight deck. So uh, there are seven slides here. Um, the first one's the quickest. It's really an overview of what we've gone through. So I'll go through the first one really quickly and then, you know, take my time on the, on the next slides to make sure 
everybody gets to really understand what we've done. So if you look at the flight deck, the timeline here, beginning in June of 2020, um, it started with curiosity. Um, it was actually Tom's wife who had seen uh, Top Tracer at Del Mar Golf Center. I'm sure at least some of you on the call are familiar with what Matt's done down there. Um, so right off the bat, Tom came in and we, we discussed what we could possibly do here at Arrowwood uh, with such cool technology. And if you notice uh, the time frame, it's June of 2020. So the golf course was just getting back up, up and running after being closed. So it really, sh it really shows our mindset, which was to hit the ground running once we were back and operating. Uh, skipping right over to, to uh, October 2020, the technology we teamed up with Top Tracer. I uh, have many good things to say about Top Tracer, as I'm sure Tom and Nikki do as well. Uh, they've been great from the start. Uh, by October, we had uh, three units up and running. Uh, the plan all along was to have 10 for the flight deck, but they worked with us and we had three units to just to get started. So um, there were a lot of kind of up and downs. It's but we'll go over those in future slides. April of 2021, breaking ground, um, you know, following months of planning and permitting, ground is broken. For anybody on the call that has gone through um, an expansion of any kind, you know, you, you're dealing with the city, just a lot of moving parts. So um, I just noticed it says falling months. Okay, months, gotta fix that. Anyway, um, it's just a lot of different things going on and it was it was really difficult to get uh to get up and running but we were not to be deterred as you can see in october 2021 we had the grand opening uh following months of ups and downs and all rounds of flight deck officially opens um, it was something that uh a, a lot of grit went into that's an, a word you'll see used that we really want our employees to to really understand and then something that uh, Tom had mentioned in his opening, the hangar, which is our uh, bar that we've put out there to really tie together the entire flight deck. Uh, Nikki will talk mostly about that, but that just opened May of 2020. <coughs> so as you can see, it was a, a two year time frame um, to get this up and running. So uh, moving to the next slide. Um, Again, I'm just taking it one, one by one. So the curiosity. So again, look at that time frame there. It's June of 2020. I believe here at Arrowwood, we were closed for the month of April. So we were barely open um, when Tom had presented doing something with Top Tracer, expanding what we have here. For those of you that are not familiar with Arrowwood, we have uh, a phenomenal golf course. It's one 18 hole facility, um, but that's about it. We don't, we don't, there's no hotel, there's no lodging, we don't have a locker room. So we've always been very golf centric. So this was something that we really looked at as an opportunity to expand. And so I, I do a what, why, where, and how on this one. Um, and the what I put here, take a business that's been struggling for consistent footing since its opening and flip the paradigm. We've been open since 2005 at Arrowwood. Uh, a lot of successes. Uh, I think it's it's been a successful first better part of 20 years, but as with many of you uh, golf operators out there, there's been some lean times. And there were, there are a lot of years where um, we, we've had to really fight through and persevere. And this is something that once we got out of uh, lockdown and came out of it, we were really looking to expand. Uh, we, we saw the growth in golf. And we, we really wanted to hit the ground running. Uh, again, for the Y growth, um, National Golf Foundation numbers, um, you know, 36 million people pick up a golf club annually. It's really split about in, in even thirds. You got about 12 million that play traditional golf, as most of us know it. You've got a third that play um, both a top golf style plus uh, on course. And then you've got a third that don't even get to the golf course. And that's a lot of people to reach. Um, so it became very apparent that we were onto something. If we were gonna build something, it couldn't just be for golfers. We had to really build it for people that were curious about other aspects of the game other than playing a traditional 18 holes. Um, so the where, uh, we're looking to maximize. Again, 
Um, we're looking to expand our player base. We're looking to expand our revenues like everybody. Um, Arrowwood has the space and every opportunity to capture that player, quite literally developing our own future customer. I think this became apparent fairly quickly. Um, if you think about trying to take somebody that goes out and hits golf balls, but doesn't play golf, the transition to get them on the golf course, um, hopefully is a seamless one, but it's certainly a path that we wanted to explore. And again, I mean, golf has, has had dips in the past. And if we can simultaneously, while things are good, be creating our own golfer, again, quite literally, that's, uh, that's a pretty good thing. Um, for the how, again, in something when I do this presentation for our employees, we talk a lot about grit. Um, I put casual research, show that this was a long process which needed hard-headed commitment. That process being the process of getting first off top tracer in, which is something I'll talk about, I believe, on the next screen. And also um, to get what our ultimate vision, which is the flight deck, not just top tracer, but the flight deck. And again, we actually have the hangar, which is really kind of our spot to hang out, which is even an extension of the flight deck. And then our lessons learned, we like to, at Arrowwood, we like to talk a lot about lessons learned here. So when we have new employees, we want to get them right into it. And again, it's going to take grit. And uh, Top Tracer's bill was surprisingly reasonable. That just scratched the surface, however. So I'll explain that more on the next one. So for technology, so we're in October 2020 now. Um, and just to get from June to October, um, the first two slides here, the Top Tracer and the Logistic Realities, they, they're two different uh, tones, I will say. Uh, top Tracer Net technology is well known throughout the golf industry from Top Golf to the PGA Tour. That part's really a no-brainer. Got Top Tracer in here. Uh, they've been excellent to work with since day one. We love the technology. It's really worked out well. The logistic realities, however, I just put we need an electrician. Uh, to get this technology, you need to have an infrastructure we simply didn't have. Uh, not to get too tied down in, in details, but uh, for those of you that haven't been here, we're actually set up really well. We have golf shop, cart barn, uh, driving range, all within close proximity to each other. Um, all the wiring we needed could be could come from the driving range, uh, pardon me, from the cart barn. But we had to go underground, there was trenching. And right there, the cost realities, uh, we found out right quick that we were looking at about $50,000 just to get the uh, mostly electrical. There were other things that needed to get done, um, but we were learning on the fly. Um, you know, we, we had a lot of, we have a maintenance staff uh, who are ready and willing to help out. So a lot of the trenching, et cetera, we were really searching right from the start for ways to control costs as best we could without cutting corners. And we're, we also wanted to get built for the future. We, we don't know what's next now that we have the flight deck up and we have the hangar um, to go with it, we may want to expand. So there was a lot of solving for today while planning for tomorrow type, type of scenarios. Um, then for the vision, again, Brett, uh, Arrowwood had bigger plans that were a lot more ambitious and costly. We knew we needed to stay the course. So that's something that we really want to get across. I know I, I would like to get across um, in this presentation as well to this crowd but also uh, to our employees, it's something that we definitely want them to understand that if we've got something we're focused on as a team, we, we really fight to get it. So uh, as far as lessons learned, it's gonna take grit. The winter 20, 2020 and 2021 was one of uh, simmering hope. For those of you that were here during that time, um, you know, again, we had three, uh, three units for, from Top Tracer. And other than that, it just looked like our driving range. So it was really difficult to gauge. We just knew we were building for something, but that something wasn't quite there yet. Of course, uh, we're breaking ground in 2020. Thank you very much. Um, we're breaking ground in 2021. Um, so for, from a design standpoint, we had to hire a partner. Again, uh, Tom and myself were in meetings with design companies. We didn't really have a lot of idea. We had a good idea of what we wanted to do. Didn't have a ton of um, 
ideas on how to get that done. So we had to rely on a lot of experts. Uh, I put following careful review. We brought on a design team to build what would become known as the flight deck. Um, that was uh, something that we had really spoken about January, February, March, we were meeting with people. By April, 2021, we, we had chosen somebody, we broke ground. Uh, but as I put the next one issues, as I had said, even when we're going over this with employees, we want them to know like what went into the flight deck. So if you, you start to work for us and work over at the flight deck, we're, it's new enough where we want um, the blood and sweat that went in there. We want people to kind of have that mentality to make sure that we cultivate what we built. And I put, we ultimately paid nearly double the original quote. Anybody on this call who did, who took on any type of project in 2021, Heck, if you took on an, a project at home, I mean, just from lumber to just everything, uh, every time we turned around, the, the quotes went up. So we did what we could to cut costs, but there were just some that we just couldn't really um, just handle beyond just, just paying up. So uh, then we wanted to, you know, we always want to evolve. We had an unwavering vision. Uh, and so I won't talk too many numbers here, but you know, a short-term expected ROI of 2K a day um, in, in just increased property revenues, we knew that we had to stay the course. So, you know, whether that's bay rentals, whether that's food and beverage, uh, it was a, that's a fairly modest number, um, certainly a, a solid one over the course of a year. But that was something I think that really kind of got us through those early days. We just knew that we could, we could get that type of um, return even right off the bat that's kind of, that was our short-term goal. So more grit, expertise needed. We also found out we're at the mercy of ID8. They were the, our partner and other industry experts for the, for the flight deck build out. Um, you know, it's tough. If you're going through something and you're not the expert, you, you definitely have to rely on a lot of people. Thankfully, we've got some people in our Arrowwood, kind of our Arrowwood family and extended family in our community uh, that were able to help guide us because especially with, with price increases, delays. Uh, this was something, again, we broke around in April. We were hoping to be up for the summer and that was not the case. So it took a while. And for the lessons learned, we tell our employees become the experts. Quite simply, we needed to vet everything we were being told. Again, we, we developed a, a, a good group that we could, we could talk to. Top Tracer was great too. They, they were there at every turn for any questions we had. So. Uh, moving moving on to our grand opening um, in October 2021. So again, what we were hoping took six to ten weeks. Took about six months. Um, we were we had the whole thing closed for a while. Um, finally, we opened the flight deck last October, um, and the the reason was really uh, as we like to say around here, not just fun, but F U N. Spell it out. Um, it's why we are here. Uh, with an evolving demographic comes a whole new dynamic on property here at Arrowwood. So again, more to the numbers earlier about people uh, that don't normally play golf, uh, just go hit golf balls. That demographic is a, a demographic that's developing that we want to really turn into tomorrow's golfer. And it's really centered around fun. Um, the, the stodgy kind of reputation that golf can have is something that um, I think we all fight a little bit as we try to regenerate um, who plays our great game. And we center it around uh, fun here at Arrowwood or more specifically FUN. Uh, reality, uh, that gratification delayed. Of course, creating what we want required a lot of moving parts. So it uh, took the whole summer to get this, this up and running. And even when we got it up and running, we knew that we weren't done yet uh, we'll be talking this about some of more of those things. Uh, Nikki will be um, as we get towards later in the um, presentation. Again, grit, no let up. Uh, doubts, hiccups, general indifference and difficulties. We're not going to deter our mission. Um, you know, again, when you guys look at this presentation from the mindset that we, we show our employees, uh, some of it's a little bit repetitive, but we really want to drive home these points that this was a long process, but it really is something that we have believed in since day one. Um, I know obviously Tom brought it to us and I, I've been part of it since day one. 
I can't remember a ERI ever really doubting this. So, uh, which is un an unwavering view, which is next on our vision. Uh, we're looking to double our property revenues in less than a decade's time. I mean, that's a big, big goal overall. We, we've got some big plans here at Arrow Arrowwood, and we really like to tell people right up front that, you know, that's what we're looking to do. So we better have belief. And the flight deck, again, is as popular as golf is now, as, as great as our golf course is, and as much as we've been doing very well, um, the, there are very few things that we can do to really expand on our revenue base. And this is certainly something we found has, um, this, this is what we're hanging our hat on. Uh, lesson learned, the end goal is the reason. That's enough said. So the hangar, which um, mostly Nikki will talk about, this is something that we just had uh, come to us in May. Um, I'll, I'll briefly speak on the kind of the, the lessons learned to us for the hangar was, you know, having the, the flight deck built, um, you'll get a good look at it. We've got a little video to show you. So some of you I, are, are looking at this and not exactly seeing what I'm talking about. We'll show you a little video. Um, the hangar was uh, something that we actually had brought in. I'll let, I'll let Nikki talk more about it. But the flight deck except itself was built. And all the delays, all the price increases, we really had, you know, we were, we were better prepared for the food and beverage portion of it uh, when that came around. So, uh, but as far as our philosophy behind bringing in the hangar, you know, uh, the, straw, the straw that will stir the drink, Lots and lots of discussions. Again, we, you know, we didn't have this specific part of it uh, mapped out until we had really gone through the ringer to, to get uh, the flight deck open. So um, challenging times. None of us have ever done this before. And I put that under staffing there because we created a whole new staff. I mean, we have a whole new department here at Arrowwood. Again, we're one 18-hole facility with a restaurant here. Um, you know, we, we don't have a ton of different departments here, but that we had a whole new department and um, it really, it, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, you know, uh, for those of you at facilities that have just, you know, the two main parts, the golf and the food and beverage, um, we don't really intertwine as employees, you, you, you know, you work together every day, but you don't really work together, separate departments. This was a real combination of golf and food and beverage. I mean, this is something we had, we, we created a flight deck coordinator and that, that employee, they, they could have come from the cart barn. They could have come from, uh, they could have been a bartender here. Um, the, there's just the, the two departments are really intertwined. So that, that was one of the things that we, we really had to work through early on in the process was to make sure that we had the right people in the right place. Uh, planning, revisiting our original plans, who is our target market, and who are the people intern internally who will get us to where we need to get to. And again, just a lot of trial and error. Who, who's best for what fit? Um, execute. We are here and we are prepared. Months leading up to the hangar's arrival taught us some valuable lessons. Again, I, I've spoken about that, and I put that under execute because that's something that we've known from the beginning. We need to execute. Wherever we are in the journey, we really need to make sure that all of our staff comes in every day looking to execute. And uh, lessons learned, no surprise, he used the word grit again, gonna take some grit. In the spring of 2020, 2022, lessons came daily as we finally saw tangible gains in June. Again, I'll let Nikki talk about where we are today. And um, the, I, I believe this is my last one. Uh, what's gonna happen? We're looking forward um, from summer 2022, we've got kind of an 18 month. We'll probably be showing this to our employees, our new employees for the next year or so. Um, we're looking to, again, double our revenues. Um, we ask our employees to think like an owner. Um, still asking them to have some grit, passion and purpose go hand in hand as a flight deck will go as far as the individuals. Uh, waking up daily, striving for the greater good. Um, we've got to be persistent, perform daily. I'd mentioned earlier, you know, our, our quick round number was to take about, uh, you know, 2K a day. Uh, we really see this just on its own, the flight deck with the, with the hangar becoming a million dollar operation. 
which for an, an, a golf course of our size uh, with our revenue base, that, that's a big difference for us. So that's something that we, we share with our employees. We have no problem sharing here. That, that's something that that's a number we're looking at right off the bat and execute every day. Our team is as unique as our vision. And that's simply an everyday fact here at, at Arrowwood. Um, we really are a family here and, and nothing to me epitomizes uh, who we are and what we've done more than the flight deck, so. Thank you, Greg. Uh, that, that was a very uh, granular presentation of the past of a flight deck as we, as we know it today. Uh, obviously, uh, you were a very instrumental in making this possible, making a reality from vision to reality. And I think you were the best person to give us uh, the, the past of flight deck. And now, uh, any questions from the floor? If not, I'll go ahead, Mr. Addis. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, Greg, uh, a quick question. When you say double your revenues, are, are you talking about range revenues? Um, and then uh, along with that, when you say uh, your ROI, you want to increase your ROI to $2,000 a day, if I heard it right, is that your net ROI or is that you, you considering ROI part of the overall uh, uh, operating in, uh, income that you bring in? Net uh, yeah, two great questions. Uh, one, the, the doubling, um, that is uh, the flight, most of this presentation for our employees is for just based on the flight deck. That's an overall goal is to double. The flight deck is just a key. It, it, the purpose is to step back and say, okay, we're looking at this in the big picture as a property, remembering the golf course is our bread and butter and kind of trying to take in all of uh, what the flight deck could mean to that. So the double over the course of, let's say, ten, eight, 10 years would be the property overall. Um, as far as the ROI, that the revenue itself is what I was looking at there. I, I'm not looking at the, the slide, but yeah, that, that 2K a day was just additional revenue that we're bringing in. Okay. So, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I think if, it, if I put 2K, I, I noticed a spelling mistake or two. So I got to clean this up a little bit. But yeah, we were just looking. I, I think, um, you know, when we first got started on this, it was just as much as this is a process and it, as slow as it is to get going, um, this is something where we can look at a, a, a pretty big number that's going to be added. Nikki will talk a little bit about a food and beverage versus golf breakdown, but we're, we're certainly the, the goal for next year is definitely to, to have it bring in a, a million unique dollars to on top of where we would be without it. Outstanding. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the question. So from June, 2020, uh, we are at July, 2022. So 25 months into this, uh, a journey. And so I think Nikki, you have a video to show us. Yeah. So I'll just show this is, this was a few months back. So um, we've had a few updates since, but just for those who have never been to flight deck, it'll give you a good idea of what we're actually talking about. So let me see if I can figure this out. And I apologize in advance. I think the video might be a little bit, uh, see Skippy Golf has grown tremendously since the beginning of the pandemic, and there's been a little bit of growth here at Arrowwood Golf Course in Oceanside as well. Thompson, so much to celebrate. Come on over here and tell me about the newest addition, this number right behind us. See, right behind us, uh, Ashley, it's, it's called a flight deck. It's a 10 bays with uh, top tracer technology, and we have built a, a lounge behind it with cover, with sofa, with TV, and music to allow for FUN mm -hmm. for the users. 
So tell us a little bit about the vision because a lot of people, they may think of golf and think it's a quiet sport where you have to whisper all day long. Not the case here at the Flight Deck. No, it's totally not the case. <laughs> I'm sure people are familiar with Top Golf. Uh, in line with Top Golf, what we're trying to do is our vision is to innovate a human experience through golf technology. And through Top Tracer, we're able to do that. Arrowwood is known in the golf course community as a beautiful course. Professional golfers love coming here, serious golfers, but this is really going to attract a new generation and a new way of non-golfers. It's totally correct. It's six dollars per person per hour. It's a really affordable. This is all about the, the non-serious golfers, recreational golfers who are in the community. We have thousands of homes around the golf course. We want the non-golfers to come up and just have a lot of FUN, enjoy our FMB service, and, and just go home and feeling good, and hopefully they come back next time. And you talk about this need for people to have fun, F-U-N, spell it out. This is great for not just a date night or getting friends together, it's great for the whole family. There's kids opportunities too. We're, we're even dog friendly. Dog. So we got the whole family here. Unlike golf, uh, 18 holes, it's less time, less costly, and more importantly, more fun. Nice. <laughs> Nikki, this is so much fun, and Tom said it was designed for people to have a great time. Really, an experience built around the non golfer. Yep, that's exactly it. So, we designed this, you know, to get everyone from the community out here. All ages can come out, have fun, whether they play golf or not. Um, you know, come out here with family, friends, eat, drink, and, you know, at least try golf. And then if they like it, they can head out on a beautiful golf course as well. And this is so cool because it uses the latest in golf technology to really bring people together, though, and just have a great time and truly sit down and relax while enjoying golf. Yeah, so we use Top Tracer technology, which is what they use on the PGA Tour. So when you're watching Tiger Woods playing golf, you see that line tracking. That's Top Tracer technology that we have here at Arrowwood. You can book an hour with your friends and family and you know just kick back relax and and play so yeah super fun and that's so cool that you can book as little as an hour because mm -hmm. a lot of people shy away from the sport of golf because it's an all-day commitment typically yes. but this is cool to know you can come get a little exercise mm -hmm. and have some fun um, how do people go about reserving this so you can go to our website arrowwoodgolf.com reserve an hour two hours three hours whatever you want we also have events so you can book uh, events that we have on our website available too. So. And you did mention, you know, some of the top pros, Tiger Woods is one that uses this technology, mm -hmm. but it really is cool because you can bring the kids out here and mm -hmm. play games. There's like a fish game or something. Yeah, so we have go fish that I like to play too. It's not just for kids, but yeah, basically instead of playing golf and hitting targets, you're trying to catch fish out there. And then if you hit a good shot towards the target, the bigger the fish, so super cool. And I've heard a lot about the menu that you offer here, both drinks and food. Should yes. we try some? We definitely should try some. I'm thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> My superb athleticism <laughs> helped me work up an appetite. This is just a small sampling of what's on the menu. Yes, we have so many different options. Um, our famous uh, burger, and then we have our Philly cheesesteak here. Um, but everything is so good. We have options for everyone. We've got veggie burgers, salads, pizzas, you name it. Nice. So, yes, and then our signature drinks as well. All right, well, yes. cheers to that. This cheers. is my idea of a round of yes. golf. <laughs> All right, so that was me and Tom's five minutes of fame there. Um, but just to give you all a better idea um, of what Flight Deck is, so I have. Oh. There we go. Um, I have a little short presentation here uh, about where we're at now and where we're going. So this is the hangar. Um, so a little backstory as to why we did this. Um, when we first put in Top Tracer, our original thought was golf. So having golfers come out before their rounds, after their rounds, you know, using the customers that we already have. Uh, we quickly learned that this is not the way to be successful with this. Um, so we decided to shift our focus more towards food and beverage. And there's an interesting um, stat that I think um, I believe it's Top Golf said that f like 51% of all of their customers have never touched a club before. So um, that's just, that's huge. That's a huge percentage. So uh, we needed to shift again more towards food and beverage. So um, Tom, once he made me assistant general manager, I 
kind of became the bridge between golf and food and beverage. And he said, we needed a bar. So I was looking up on Pinterest, you know, bars, small bars, outdoor bars. And originally my thought was, okay, we need to build something from the ground up. And that was just not in our budget and not in the time frame that we wanted. So um, I found shipping container bars. So we found this company called Britain and they're in Michigan. Um, and they actually, within a few months, uh, designed this for us, built it for us, customized. It has everything we need. It's got coolers, um, just the perfect bar setup. So um, that is the hanger right there. It's also got, I think you can see better here, a full rooftop. Um, we've now put updated furniture up there. Um, <clears throat> so with the hanger, you know, being at a golf course, you know, especially at Arrowwood for the seven years I've been here, it's mostly been about golf. So um, I think we were at 85% of our revenues came from golf, um, leaving 15% for food and beverage. And now with the hangar at Flight Deck, just that Flight Deck itself, our revenues are 75% food and beverage. Um, so that really just goes to show where the focus is and how we need to do our marketing. Um, so on that note, oh, there's the inside of the bar. You can see facing out towards the driving range. Um, our success has been with events. Um, we've found that this year in the past couple months, especially events have been huge for flight deck. So you can see on the left there, we have DJs out, we have live bands out the bottom right corner. Um, you can see people playing cornhole. So pretty much every day of the week, we have some sort of event to keep flight deck filled. Um, we have, you know, we've used our slow days to our advantage to try to market different events. So for example, we do clean picks on Tuesday, so we have to shut the range down early. So what we've done was created cornhole on Tuesdays because that's when the range is dead. So um, we're filling up the driving range with people playing cornhole. Wednesdays, we have food truck Wednesdays. We have Friday night music, Sunday fun day has been a hit. Um, Sunday fun day is basically um, a vendor comes out, a different vendor every week and you can play, bring your friends, family, super family friendly, um, as Tom said, dog friendly as well. Um, and then lastly, we have you know private events. So birthday parties, corporate parties, all that good stuff. So that's where we're at right now. As far as the future goes, um, we just need to expand on events. We found that that's what's successful. Um, another thing we're very excited about, which Tom already said that I wasn't sure we were gonna talk about it on here, but um, we've decided to get our own food truck. So right now we just have the barbecues. Um, with this um, type of setup with the hangar, um, due to permitting and, um, you know, all the rules and all you know the boring stuff you can't cook in there so we needed to come up with a solution for that and right now our servers are running back and forth from fairways our um, restaurant back to flight deck delivering food so in order to grow our food revenues and you know have a smoother process we are getting our very own um, branded food truck so that is what's to come um, that's pretty much it for me, I know it's a little bit short, but if anyone has any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Let me stop sharing my screen here. Thank you, Nikki, for that uh, past, or sorry, present, future of Flight Tech presentation, the great video, and uh, great pictures from of the hangar. Any questions from the audience? I really think that we've been very fortunate uh, with the owner uh, allowing us to diversify our revenue sources with this investment. Investment was has been timely, has been costly, but I think three of us, and, and included rest of air with family, are very, very uh, strong belief that this flight deck will literally take off. Uh, and it's already taken off this year. And, and the lessons learned this year would, would definitely take off again in 2023 with the addition of the food truck. And it really allows Airwood to be a place of 
you know, as we said in the video many times, F-U-N, and that's what people pay to have fun. Uh, that's what we're here. And, and I think it's allowing us to provide a lot of, F uh, a lot of fun to a lot of people in the community who uh, are not golfers. Uh, the two thirds who are non, non serious golfers are able to come to fight back and uh, enjoy the time here. Uh, any questions for anyone? Any comments? Hopefully this was a, uh, not only educational, but also a fun presentation. Uh, hopefully you understand now uh, the benefits of this type of investment into technology of golf, as well as trying to build out the FMB revenues. Uh, next year we have uh, aggressive plans to, uh, for the budget of Flight Tech. And I think with the addition of the food truck will be complete in terms of all of our resources uh, being available. And, and, the, and again, the events have been very, very instrumental in this success so far. And we will continue to come up with creative and, and fun events uh, for, for the future. Yeah, and if anyone wants to come out, sorry to interrupt, Tom. I yeah. know Nikki's on this call. She's been out a few times, but if anyone else wants to come out, bring your team out, please send us an email and we'll, we'll definitely have you out. We have uh, lots of vis visitors about uh, to see the flight deck uh, physically on a weekly basis. A lot of, uh, I guess, interest from other facilities uh, in Southern California. Again, if you have a range of 20 bays, not even 20 bays, 10 bays or more, where there's some space behind it, uh, that, that's a possibility of building out the flight deck at your facility. And we're more than uh, happy to uh, share all the lessons learned uh, during the last two years and going forward. Uh, so please reach out to us if you have any questions about doing something similar at your facility uh, in the future. If, if no further questions, Greg uh, or Nikki, any last minute comments before we complete the, the call? No, but thank you all for coming. Greg, anything from you? Uh, not, not too, too much, but um, one of the things that uh, kind of went un, unsaid, you know, if you notice like uh, Tom in the video or Tom and Nikki now are wearing uh, the flight deck uniform. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I didn't have mine, so I wore the flight deck hat. I've been trying to show off my Diet Coke with my flight deck. Uh, um, it, it's just, I, I think we're really finding as an, as an operation, we're just scratching the surface. I mean, we're cre creating a whole new brand for ourselves. And, um, and we're really trying to stay, um, find that balance between something that's off the golf course and something that's on the golf course. Uh, the flight deck literally sits uh, a, a flop shot from our 10th tee. So, um, you know, we, we use it a lot for our turn as well right now. So uh, we found for every challenge we found, we found two solutions that uh, really help us overall. So whether it be marketing or whether it be helping to expedite people at the turn, um, it, it's really an ongoing learning lesson and uh, something I think we can really help. Uh, it, it can really help our overall profile with the public too, which can only help us. So, but thank, thank you all for attending. Uh, lastly, I know there are three names uh, that joined uh, Dennis Toon or Derek Kong and Brian Bor Borowski. Uh, sorry if I didn't pronounce it properly. Do you guys have any questions for us? I know. Uh, hopefully it was educational. Uh, any, any questions from you before we end the call? Great, uh, no questions. Uh, again, thank you for your time for joining us today. And uh, this, is, this will be available uh, on YouTube. Uh, Steve Monday will be sending out an email to everyone uh, to have access to this uh, recording, this call on YouTube so you can access it uh, at a later time. Again, thank you for joining. Thank you, uh, Greg and Nikki, for being our special guest today. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks, everyone.